What's up folks, it's Kurt and Lee. We're out for our third annual trip down to Pennsylvania to do some scouting. Uh, we've been waiting here since we got out of school a couple weeks ago and uh, it's freaking hot. We picked the hottest two days, about 84 today. It's gonna be about 92 tomorrow, but part of it's getting out, having some beer, sitting around a campfire and getting away from work and home for a little bit. So here it is, beginning of two days of scouting, North Central PA. We're gonna get out and we're gonna see if we can find some places to hunt this fall. Did you say it's only 84? Okay. Here's the beginning, hot July days, and we're off to see what we can find. See some summer deer trails along here that are heading down towards the creek. We've already come across three or four beds in these shaded areas. So we're gonna work ourselves up along the edge of this creek, but then the goal is get the other side of the creek and walk along the edge of the hardwood forest in the open areas so we can find some deer trails or a sign from the fall along these transition lines. Lee and I are walking up along the edge of this field and we're looking at some of these shady areas and trying to find some places where there's some deer beds. And I would definitely say that that deer bed is being used quite a bit right now and there's an escape avenue to the right and uh, I bet you anything in the fall would be a great place if you could find a way to set up. Think this bed is used much, buddy? Look at that Put in here. It. What are you talking about? Holy crap. Sit right in here. There's your view out in front of you. Lee's putting a tree stand waypoint on Onyx as a possible observation set right here at this big birch. It's all thick stuff behind us and goes up into the woods. As you look down below us, it's all wide open down to a creek. And then off to our right up here, there's a whole bunch of apple trees. And each one of those apple trees had huge beds underneath them that deer are using uh, for extended periods of time. So we're going to mark this as an observation set right here. And we're going to keep walking along this transition between this open meadow and this hardwood up to our left. This is a great bed right here, right in the edge of this thick forested area. Got this bed up on this knoll. What a view this deer's got right here. Dude, I think this would be a stellar spot to set up a ground blind somewhere in here. We can come right, tuck right back up in here. Tell tale sign that this trail is being used a bunch and the deer running over it have knocked all the moss off the log. Thought I stepped on a snake for a minute, but I didn't. Just a big old toad. Look at the size of this white oak. And if you look up, you can see it's got more leaves than some of the other white oaks we've seen, but still, gypsy moths over two years and frosts things struggling to stay alive I doubt it'll be any acorns at all this year hopefully it can recover for next year well, that's cool just kicked up a deer it was out bedded in the swamp on this hot 85 90 degree day we've been walking for about an hour here and finally for the first time we started to see some rubs not super fresh up until we got to this one this one is definitely last year and has been used for multiple years right there. And uh, if you take a look, there's evidence of some historic rubs on some of these other trees right here. So no doubt about it, um, definitely a place in which there's some buck moving through here. Lee and I just left all bedding up here. There's an old clear cut up there, super thick. There's all these trails 
that come down to this funnel along this steep edge along the river. And then as we're walking down into this area, this is the first place that it's actually a gentle enough slope that the deer can walk down into this field and out into the river to get a drink. So Lee and I just found this great spot. We actually have the edge of the woods in a field and then we actually have a finger of woods which both meet at a Y right here in front of us. And then this continues around the edge of this hill and right up against the creek. There's two trails up above us. There's several trails that come up this hill, hill from the field below. And uh, we've got a tree picked out right in here. Are you calling somebody? <laughs> FaceTime and my girlfriend, I didn't even know it. You're on my mind, honey. You know which end goes up this time? Yeah, I screwed that up before. Yeah, the last time I was out with you did upside down. You're gonna laugh at me. This thorn goes into my thigh. <laughs> Maybe a little. It's all right, I'd laugh at you too. I get it. Little trick, if you're putting up cameras, you're putting them up a little bit high, bring your lineman's belt with you. And that way you've got two hands. I pre-tie a loop in the end of all the paracord that I have for my cameras. So when I bring the paracord around, all I have to do is go through the loop. that I want it. Take this paracord right up around there. I just wrap it back around the opposite side of the tree without putting a thorn in my hand. I usually use about six feet of paracord. Some of the other videos you guys may have seen of mine already too. Remember that I go ahead and I burn the ends of all this paracord uh, at home before I come out. That way this paracord doesn't fray. It's got white cords inside it that fray like crazy if you don't take care of them. <laughs> we already figured out which key it was for me. First try. First try. And it wasn't even the right key. We found out there's two keys on there that work for the same lock. Still first try. I was impressed. So was I. There's like 30 keys on there. I even camouflaged my cable locks this year. I had a couple times last year where I looked and man, it was so easy to see it from a long distance away. I decided to go ahead and put some camouflage on the cable locks so that they were more difficult to see. Here's one other thing that I learned from another guy on YouTube. If you take your camera and you put it on selfie mode and you go ahead and hold your camera there, take a photo, that photo gives you an idea of the approximate field of view that the camera is gonna be getting. Lee's gonna walk up around and take a look and uh, we'll test a couple pictures on this camera to see what comes out here, see whether or not we're gonna end up getting anything in the field of view. Okay, so we set this camera up. We both went out where we thought the deer were gonna come across on trails. Lee's gonna go ahead and punch the code in now. Okay, so now that the code is in, hit the replay button. So now we're going through the replay real quick and just making sure that we can see what's on the camera. You think we're catching what we're supposed to be? I think I, you got me when I came across. Okay, so Lee and I set this camera up real quick and took a couple of test pictures. Two trails come together a meter to Y right there. Lee's on one, I'm on the other, so that's good. We're all set with this camera.
think this deer has got a commanding view. He's got all this behind him. Nice big bed right there. Creek out in front of him. Pretty cool. Farmer's field's just on the other side of those trees. Why didn't I just do this before? Yeah, that's what I ended up doing. Boots will dry overnight. Coach, that's a huge ass poplar and sycamore right next to it. That's cool. Home sweet home for Lee and I for a couple of days. Got the pop-up tent here, which is great. Be able to hang wet stuff. A couple chairs, nice little picnic table. Made a fire last night with firewood. We got electric. 90 degrees today, so we got a fan to sleep. Got our cots. Got a table back there to charge all the electrical stuff all of our food we are ready to get on the road and start our scout today so now that we've done this for two years what's your goal today what do you think we should get out of this three to four good stand locations they can multiple wind directions yeah yeah i agree we only got west on those three stands yesterday yeah but they're good yeah i think they're all solid <laughs> the one is really good well, the nice thing we said about going in there is we can both hunt the same day on the same wind. We've got yep. three stands all with any west wind. So definitely today it'd be nice to find, like you said, stuff with some multiple wind directions. Yep. I think that we really need to focus on that edge along the clear cuts today. See if we can find some of those benches along the steep faces that, you know, deer are going to travel on yep. and um, see if we can find some creek crossings to help us determine, you know, paths of Well, if we can find a pinch point moving. like we found yesterday. Oh my God, that pinch point yesterday yep. was awesome. Great. Right up against that cliff that dropped into the river, there was nowhere else for them to go. Yeah. That's why we're coming up here. I mean, to come into the mountains that are just monotonous with mature forest makes it pretty damn difficult to locate deer movement. You can do it, you can find those funnels, but we found hunting the last two years that some of those places, those deer don't come past that area every three or four days. Yeah. I'd like to stack the odds in our favor a little bit that we're gonna see deer daily. I don't think we're gonna have to worry about the pissing rain today. No, that'd just be sweat. 92 degrees and 85, 90% humidity. Day two. I'm gonna hurdle it. Lee and I got a pretty ambitious idea of three mountains, three valleys, a couple of clear cuts today. We'll see how far we make it. So here's this shelter wood that we hiked up to. Absolutely beautiful morning with the fog down in all the valleys. We get up to the shelter wood to get an idea of what we're gonna see. <laughs> and the state went ahead and put a fence up. So I don't think you're gonna see deer moving in and out of this. So it's gonna change our hike around a little bit, but we're gonna work down to the bottom of this shelter wood cut and uh, start moving down along those valleys and check out some of the other places that uh, are cuts and clear cuts today. Yeah, but this is what we wanted to see down here where this clear cut opens up into the forest down below it So off the edge of this clear cut that's fenced You got some of these areas where you see these deer trails go down into this real thick stuff It's a 2017 cut. So it's been about six years So there's definitely lots of browse for food in there and no doubt about it There's definitely a lot of bedding in the shelter wood cut, they left a lot of mature oaks for regeneration. And you can see how it changes right here into this mature forest and super steep. But we're gonna see if we can find some transition lines today, try and work off those to find some deer trails 
figure out where to set up for the fall. They're using these trails. We found evidence of some old scrapes on these trails as well, too. So you're walking right down this path right here. Pretty cool how this environment can change in the middle of the PA mountains. We're just trying to find those edge areas where we're going to find deer sign. And thus far, we've found some tracks and some remnants of some old scrapes, but not a lot of sign that makes us want to stop and think about setting up somewhere or even following a big deer trail. What a change in the habitat. Smidget. This freaking big woods. And the mountain laurel makes it real difficult to get anywhere. Here's the other thing that can be real about. How far are we gonna to want to hike in right. to a spot? Yeah. Do we go deeper or do we look and go, okay? So you said that oh, one yeah. area back that way. Had better sign. Yeah. And if you find something, it's more realistic of a hike. So we're probably at what? A good to here? Mile and three quarters? Yeah, 1.62. Just to here. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. yeah, I totally agree with that. Ooh. This is spring fed. Cold water? Uh-huh. Beautiful, man. There's, it's got to be 20 degrees colder down here. Oh, absolutely. If not 30. Yeah. Well, that year that Blake and I went to Ohio, we were doing the same thing. Only the difference in elevation there is 300 feet, top <laughs> to bottom, <laughs> not 1,100 feet. One foot in front of the other. I know, I just can't tell where the big rock is. There's another one, yeah, just half a step forward there's a big one underwater right there there goes the shoe <laughs> not that one there. well lee and i decided to cut our losses sometimes things work out and sometimes they don't it was just so thick in here so much mountain laurel we thought we were going to find a lot more deer trails on the edges of clear cuts and you know this first hour of the walk we just haven't found what we're looking for. So we're gonna back out, get back on this logging road we came in on, and we're gonna go hop to some other places that we thought about scouting later in the summer. Oh well, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. That's why they call it scouting. I think that was a good call, coming back up the logging path. Instead of trying to walk up that creek, and walk up that steep face. We are back on the logging trail, which slowly meanders back up through these shelter wood cuts, gets to the top of the fire cut. We can head back to the truck, get something cold to drink, cooled off in the AC, take a look at the map to see what places we're gonna go to next. Super cool. We saw a doe, a fawn, and a buck. We gotta find edge if we're gonna hunt this big woods. Yep. And if we're gonna hunt the edges of these clear cuts, but we have to, I guess, be realistic about how far you're gonna walk in. Last two and a half years scouting, I have definitely found overlooked places that aren't but a hundred yards off the road. Yep. I mean, you gotta look for them, it takes time. But man, when I've found them, I've got a couple of places right now that it takes me three minutes to walk from my truck to get to the place I'm sitting in my tree stand. And there's no human time because people overlook it because it's behind thick stuff. It's across a creek. It's. I think that's a big one. It's across a creek. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, Lee and I changed up plans. 
came down to the flats along a big creek. There's some farmer's fields down around here. Uh, there's a nice creek that meanders through, a couple of small clear cuts, and then it heads up uh, into some uh, oaks on the side of a mountain. So we're gonna try and uh, do a little bit of scouting here on two separate areas. Uh, where we think we have a lot of diverse habitat and have some potential for seeing heck of a lot more deer sign than what we just saw when we were up in the mountains. I've already seen more sign in 100 yards than I saw in three miles. Yeah, total tracks along here. Lee and I just found this great crossing right here. We're only about 80 yards away from some farmer's fields. And uh, just down below us here, about 150 yards, we found an area where like five trails meet all at one place. And uh, right here, we've got a pretty heavy trail crossing that we're gonna go ahead and uh, put a camera up and uh, see what we get. We're gonna parallel down along the edge of this and see if we can find some trails that parallel the field and parallel the contours of this hill and ridge that's up to our right. Walking along the edge of this wheat field here. I'm gonna come along and there's a bed right there. Huge bed right here. This is what it looks like from inside their bed. Got coverage behind them. And if you look close, sitting right here eating. You can see all the tops of all this wheat is chewed off right here. That's pretty cool. Got the wind at their back with the thick stuff behind them. And then in front of them, they got this entire view to keep an eye on predators. This is pretty cool to sit down and see what they see, you know? I mean, cause this is it. No wonder they see you coming. Yeah. We went all the way around that field, so thick around the edges, but way in the far back corner where you see that little creek valley there, we've got two possible tree stands set up there and ready to go for the fall. That's a cub. Okay, lunch break. After our morning hike, our second stop, first one didn't work out, second one did. Four quality tree stands, having a little lunch in the shade. What is it, coach? 92? 106. Yeah, it's super hot. We we're literally sitting in the shade eating lunch, having a couple of drinks, and uh, we're even thinking about going down and swimming in the creek. Here, head back to camp, relax for the afternoon, go find a bar to eat at, sit around the campfire tonight. Rough life, huh, buddy? Mm hmm. I told Lee, I'm hoping following this trail down here in my flip flops doesn't end up with me seeing a rattlesnake. Oh, look, a nice. <laughs> Did you lift your ass and just go? <laughs> I think so. All right. <sighs> 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 Too much for 96 <laughs> degrees and overheated. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Spring fed trout stream. <laughs> well, that was kind of a mixed bag of a day, you know. Struck gold last night, struck out this morning, found a couple of real solid spots in the middle of the day, and then struck out again at the end of the day. But I guess that's part of scouting, right? Yep, you win some of those. Yep. Right. Head back to camp. End of a good day, buddy. Mm -hmm. Three scouts today. One was successful. The other two, we learned some stuff. <laughs> Great nice. dinner. Successful. Swimming in the creek. Saw a bear and a buck. One more short scout in the morning, and then we're back home. And I'm excited to do some archery hunting in PA this fall. Yep. Do you call that swimming in the creek? Well, we're drifting. I was going to go chunky dunking. <laughs>
Lee and I are on our third day on our PA scout. Uh, first night we were here, we found some super solid spots. Yesterday was a mixed bag. We found a couple of solid places, but we had two scouts too that didn't pan out. So this morning we got the camp packed up. We're ready to go home, but we have one last scout around some corn and some bean fields that we found on public land. So we're gonna go ahead right now and take that scout and see what we find out. So we're walking along the edge of this bean field here. And if you can look, down there there's a flat and it goes out into a river. And there's no doubt about it that they're bedding down on this flat and all this thick stuff out onto the river flat. And then they're coming up in the evening on these trails up this little slope and then out into this bean field to feed. Lee and I just found a great crossing right here. Some locust trees over there that we can set up in on the opposite side of the creek. And a lot of bedding in this area. It's gonna be difficult to get in. You're gonna have to come in on the creek and sneak up the side of the bank, not on one of the deer trails. But we think we got our wind direction set up that are blowing back behind us into the creek. If we sit on a north or northwest wind, um, we're gonna have the deer coming out to our left and out in front of us. This other side of the creek is a hell of a lot thicker. There's beds everywhere in between this cornfield over here and this bean field over here. That. Okay, buddy, what do you say? Let's see if we hit the beans and let's go. Okay. Okay, guys. We are out of here. Found a new spot. Maybe an overlooked area. We have a feeling to meet some pressure here. But a spot that we're probably going to come back to early fall and hunt. Lee and I had a great weekend scouting in Pennsylvania for the third year in a row. Found some more promising spots and uh, looking forward to going back and evaluating our Onyx maps a little bit and then getting in here in October and November and uh, starting to do a little bit of hunting archery style for doe and hopefully some buck in the state of Pennsylvania. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe. This is Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting. Telling you have a great day. See ya.